Hello everyone! Today I bring a productive day with me for our Friday video. In this very chill video, I'm going to walk you through a productive day in my life, including organization, planning, studying for history, and writing for my master's thesis. The first thing I did this morning was actually referencing all of my sources in my master's thesis. This is kind of a very technical task that I was leaving behind for some months and I decided that I needed to fix that as soon as possible because I'm going to turn in my thesis at the end of the month so I need to take care of these small tasks while I also fix the rest of the texts and make sure that I don't have any mistakes and everything is cited properly. I'm speeding up the process because I think it's a little bit boring, but you can see that I'm basically checking my original documents and trying to understand if I'm referencing my pages correctly, I'm searching for the citations and the mentions to see if all the citations are correct. One of the tips I can give you in case you are writing a dissertation or something similar like a research paper is to really get involved while you're editing your document. As you can see on the screen, I have that sentence that is highlighted in yellow, and that's basically a comment or an annotation I'm making to myself, so I don't forget to add certain things, or edit, or delete other things, um, even if I'm currently writing something else. I like to make these reminders so I can get a very complete account of what I'm writing and the ideas I'm trying to transmit with whatever I'm writing. Here I decided to start writing the first draft of my thesis conclusion and in the end of it I was really not happy with how it turned out, I just left it on the document because I like to have at least the bones of the structure that I need to work with, but I think that I really need to revise and reread my thesis before I come up with a very solid conclusion about my findings and the things I've researched so far. In fact, I think I'm going to leave a couple of weeks before I turn in my thesis just to work on my conclusion. I think that the thesis conclusion really sums up what you were working with for so long and, and I really want to be able to transmit my ideas correctly and not use my conclusion to just summarize my previous arguments. I also suggest that in case you are writing something or you really need to focus on a very specific task like writing a conclusion, writing a paragraph, writing a short essay and so on, really try to turn off all the notifications in your computer, in your phone and so on. I usually work facing a window because I find out that I can concentrate better when I do that. I think it's really important to set up your space accordingly so you're able to be as productive as you can while also be able to get some resting time and schedule some breaks on your phone with your alarms. Although I'm speeding up this process, you can see that this actually takes longer than it looks. I need to follow some very concise citing rules. I actually don't remember the name of the rulebook I'm using here to cite my references, but they need to be perfect when I turn in the thesis and I really need to be perfect about this process. This actually took me almost all morning. It's incredible and I had to cut tons of footage from this video in order for it not to be too long, but I actually worked in my thesis all morning and I was actually doing very technical tasks and I was not writing that much. It was not a very creative morning for me, but it's not glamorous, but it's part of the job of being a student. After lunch, I started to create a very simple and quick to-do list for my masters. I was listing other types of information and technical things I needed to arrange before I turned in my thesis. Then, in that particular day, one of my classical history books had arrived and I started to read that and revise my material. Basically, because I cannot, for the sake of time and my sanity, attend all my lectures from my history class, um, I need to really be able to select which lectures I should go to and which ones I should just skip. So I really need a textbook like this that really summarizes all the information I can so I can really prepare for my tests and my exams without being harmed because I was not able to attend a specific class. 
My midterms are actually coming only in a month or so, but I want to prepare ahead as much as I can since I really need to juggle a ton of things on my plate right now. So as soon as I'm able to summarize information, to prepare my notes and my documents, and really create a concise study guide, as soon as midterms arrive, the better. I also find that I really benefit from some reading of textbooks, of articles and so on, even if I don't take notes. I feel like when I'm immersed in all of that information and all the lectures, even if I'm just skimming through different documents and so on, I really remember that information better and I can incorporate very interesting facts in my midterms and my exams. After that, I just sat on my couch and I went through my thesis again, I was revising my index, trying to update my table of contents, and after that I started preparing for another one of my midterms. So what I basically did that afternoon was going to Course Hero. This video is not sponsored by Course Hero, but I really like to rely on that website for study guides on general things that I know are not very specific to classes, as well as character analysis, symbols, analogies, and so on. I was basically compiling all of this information into Notion, uh, so I could have all that structure and that overview of different aspects that I need to study for that lecture in particular. This task was very simple and it allowed me to understand the type of information I need to memorize before my tests. And once again, that test is only occurring in a month or so, but I prefer to have everything organized right away so I'm able to prepare myself for the test without feeling nervous because I'm just studying one day or two ahead. Also, I want to say that this episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream, a subscription streaming service that offers over 2,000 documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. I'm currently complementing my prehistory class by watching Curious Minds, The Bronze Age. If you want to watch this documentary or any other from their collection, the documentary is available worldwide on many platforms. You can get unlimited access starting at just $2.99 a month and you can go to curiositystream.com slash studycorner for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. And for the people listening now, you can enter the promo code studycorner when prompted during the sign-up process and your membership is completely free for the first 30 days. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next week. Bye!